Today we are in the center of Prague and we are going to do a restaurant review and today it's a traditional Czech restaurant and it's called Upin Kasu. So this place is very popular with both tourists and locals because they have some amazing Czech food. So I'm very excited to show you this restaurant. Located right next to the popular Prague Old Town and behind the Church of Our Lady of the Snows or it's also called Kostel Pani Maria Snezne in Czech language. This is a restaurant which is very convenient to reach as it's right in the middle of the tourist hotspots and it maintains a traditional Czech pub look and feel. Stay tuned to find how this pub introduced the best beer from the town of Pilsen to Prague which ended up changing the world. The first thing which caught my attention was the intricate door design and then you have writing on the wall which is telling you that this restaurant was established in 1843 which makes it a whopping 178 years old. It's almost like we're about to step right back into time. And then on the top you're gonna notice a statue of St. Lawrence who's known as the patron saint for both cooks and comedians. Upon entering the restaurant you can see that this restaurant has kept most of its traditional look. You have three floors of indoor seating with the upper floors which are more spacious and they're really good for groups. If you come midweek after 11.30 am, you're gonna find that like most Czech restaurants, they are serving a set lunch menu of cheaper food options. Upon placing my order, as the restaurant wasn't too busy, I waited about 10 minutes for my food to arrive. So guys, the food just arrives and this looks phenomenal. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. That is so beautiful and this is such a big plate and you can see like it's super full. I'm very very excited to dig into this. So what we have in this dish, we have some beef and then we have what's called our bread dumplings which are sort of steamed so they're like super fluffy, soft and warm. And then you have a red chili in the middle, typically it's not that spicy. And then you have also some onions and some parsley I think which is put on top for extra garnish. So I'm really excited to be trying this and digging in right now. Oh guys, this meat is super tender just by touching it. You can tell like how soft it is. And I love you have like some nice fatty bits here. And then we have a bit of garnish. And then there's also more meat which is right hidden under the garnish. Oh, this looks like it's gonna be good. You can tell the dumplings are super soft and they're gonna be super fluffy. We're gonna now go for the first bite. I'm very excited for this. So I've basically layered everything. I've took a bit of the beef, a bit of the dumpling, and a bit of onion. Man, this is so good. There is sort of like a really depth in the flavor of the salt. It's almost like you mix beef, tomatoes, and onions, and then a bit of like red paprika. And it's got some roots going back to Hungarian history because it's almost like Hungarian goulash. But it's so good. The flavor is so intense. And it's got a little bit of I want to say a little bit of a bland taste, but it's like a depth. Where if you like, for example, braise some beef and then you cook it after, you get like this depth from that. But this is really good. The dumplings are super, super soft and fluffy. It's like eating little pieces of clouds. And then you get like the aftertaste of the onion as well at the end. But this is really, really tasty. Mm. This is good, guys. It's been a long time since I ate gulash and this is delivering right here. And for drink, I got non-alcoholic. So this restaurant is like histories going back to when Pilsner was first brewed. So the story about this is that the founder of this restaurant, Jakub Pinkas, was one of the first people to test the first ever pale lager which was created called Pilsner in 1843 and this was the year after it was created in the Czech town of Pilsen. He then introduced it on draft to the Prague people and it became so popular with the locals that it was sold in most pubs within Prague. And now, 9 out of 10 beers which are produced and consumed in the world are pale lagers which are based on this Pilsner beer. An interesting thing is that if you go to the bottom floor of this restaurant, you can even see the tap where it was first poured in 1843. I went for Nano Holic and they have it called Birel. I'm not a fan of this. I would prefer to have this with Pilsner alcoholic beer. I would say it was okay flavor considering it's non alcoholic, but Pilsner is still superior. If you come in the warm period of spring and autumn, depending on the weather, they open the Gothic Garden Auto Seating which is very unique in Prague. As you are sitting right next to these huge walls of the Church of Our Lady of the Snows and there's no other restaurant in Prague where you get such kind of outdoor seating. So we just come out of the restaurant, so I found out they have upstairs seating, so there's more space there because downstairs where I was sitting was a bit tight, but still it was a bit cozy. So the total price I paid was 318 for the meal and the drink and the food was absolutely worth it. You're getting traditional Czech food here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our next videos on our other progress and reviews right here.